Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Our topic today is abduction aboard a UFO. This is an unusual episode today. And the reason is this. Normally, my goal on New Thinking Aloud is to include the most credible information that I can in the area of the paranormal. And today is an exception in the sense that I'm going to present a story about which I have very little confidence. I don't think it's a true story, to be honest. We're talking about the book, The Thea Uba Prophecy, written by Michel de Marquet, a Frenchman living in Australia, about his abduction aboard a UFO and his journey to the planet Thea Uba. Now, since I don't really think this is a very credible report. Why am I including it at all? And the reason is that it's a very powerful story. And although I don't accept the premise of this story, I do think it's possible that people have been taken aboard UFOs or spacecraft and have visited other planets. And furthermore, I think that the archetype behind this story, the idea of wise visitors from the sky, giant creatures who look benevolently upon the human race and are here to help us and guide us, all of that, not only does it make sense to me, it's a very powerful archetype. Now, I also want to add that if you go onto the internet, you will find that there are various websites and discussion groups uh, formed by people who have read this book, The Thea Uba Prophecy, and wish to pursue it further. And you'll see that there are people in these groups who insist that they themselves have had telepathic experiences, contacts uh, on the astral plane with the Thea Ubans, even with a particular Thea Uban that that Michel de Marquet writes about named Thou. So the question then persists, if this is an imaginary account, which I suspect it is, how is it that other people are entering into the reality and having inner experiences that for them justify the reality of it? The question is, is it imaginary or is it imaginal? as I have talked about many times on New Thinking Aloud. And just where is the boundary between the imaginary realm and the imaginal realm? How do these two realms interface with each other? How do they each interface with the realm of physical reality? My guest today is Samuel Chong, and he's an individual who claims, and I believe his story, that his life was changed when he read the book, The Thea Uba Prophecy, and went out of his way to visit the author, Michel de Marquet, who was living in a remote part of Vietnam at the time and avoiding almost all public contact. Now, Samuel, I am sure, is very sincere and highly motivated. He has set up the China Sona Foundation dedicated to doing good in the world, and he even gives away every year a $1,000 scholarship to a young person who has read the book, The Thea Uba Prophecy, and writes an essay about uh, what we can do to make this world a better place. Samuel was instrumental in the publication of this book, The Thea Uba Prophecy, in China, where it has subsequently become a bestseller. He is a certified court reporter and Chinese translator uh, based in Los Angeles. And now I'll turn over to the internet video. Welcome, Samuel. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you. My pleasure. Let's begin by talking about how you came to meet Michelle Desmarquette. Yes, it's a very interesting story. 
Um, I accidentally found this book when I was searching on Amazon looking for a book on the UFO contactees. I was looking to learn how we can progress better and to learn about the alien technologies through the information given by the extraterrestrials to the contactee. So I found this book called Abduction to the Ninth Planet. I checked it out from a local library and I found the book very fascinating, especially when I read a chapter on who is Christ because it resolved all my questions regarding the Bible. For example, I was questioning why Jesus was able to perform miracles only after the age of 30 and not before. Presumably, if someone has these extraordinary abilities, someone would have been able to do that much earlier, at a much earlier age. So the book explains all the mysteries, including mysteries about the Bermuda Triangle, the mysterious disappearances, and also other things about the human energy fields. So I was fascinated by the content of the book. And the book, the book has a postscript. It says, there are other fascinating and extraordinary things that the author wasn't allowed to be written in the book. So I was very, very puzzled by it. And I wanted to find out what other content, what other information that the author was not allowed to write in the book. So I decided to pay a visit to the author who was still living at that time. And I visited where he resided in Vietnam at that time, and then found him and, and um, had a, a very nice conversation with him for the first time that I met him. He was originally, if I understand correctly, a Frenchman. Uh, French was his native language, uh, but when he wrote the book, I gather, he was living in Australia. That's correct. He was a French-Australian. So you, you made the, uh, the journey to Vietnam, and I gather that you uh, had to go to some trouble to locate him in Vietnam. He wasn't making his identity or his location public at that time. That's right. Uh, he was a very private person, even though he gave a lot of lectures back then in the early 90s. And I was um, able to locate him just by, uh, by luck, by pure luck. I knew which city he was located in, and I just flew into the city and showed the local taxi driver a photo of the bungalow, which appeared on the internet. And then the taxi driver took me to the bungalows where he thought the bungalows would be located. And at the second trial, I found where he was. That was quite fortuitous, and as a result of that, you persisted and, and developed a personal relationship with him. That's right. I met him, um, and he was uh, annoyed at that time. In the very beginning, he was very annoyed because he was a very private person. But then, um, before I was about to leave that city, and he showed me a contract, he says, Samuel, uh, this is the contract that the Chinese publisher signed with me. They even paid $2,000 to buy the copyright, but I never heard from them again. Please follow up with them to see what happens with my book. And then I began to kind of like working for him. In fact, as I recall, you uh, at your own expense hired some translators to translate the book into Chinese and after much trouble arrange for uh, Chinese publication. Yes, that's correct. I paid a, a translator to polish an uh, existing translation, and then it was extremely, extremely difficult to have the book published in China because of the censorship. They didn't want to publish anything related to religion, specifically related to the Christian religion. And the book talks about Christianity at length. And I gathered the book was published in 2018 in China uh, at a time when uh, Mr. Desmarquet was still alive, and, and it has done very well in the Chinese market. Yes, it uh, became a bestseller uh, immediately after social media um, uh, hosts started to talk about the book. 
And so far, it's still the bestseller. I think uh, just two or three months ago, it hit the top 30 list in uh, fiction books in China, even though the book is not a fiction. <laughs> it's published as a fiction book in China. This gets us right down to the heart of the matter, because uh, all of your conversations with Mr. Desmarquette were ones in which he insisted that this is a true story. Yes, he insisted the book to be published as a nonfiction. But for China, somehow he caved in. I, I see. So officially, it's uh, considered fiction in China. That's correct. Now, now, an interesting point, of course, is is that this was his first book, and uh, he describes in the book how why, you know how why should I be chosen to visit this distant planet of Thea Uba and and report on it? I'm not a writer, uh, but subsequently he has written books of fiction. Yes, that's correct. Uh, he, after this book became popular, he wrote uh, two other fiction books, but those books are not as popular as this one. And, and another strange thing is that the original uh, edition of the book you read in English, uh, which I presume was translated from his French, w never became that popular in the uh, English market. Uh, that's correct. It, uh, for some reason, the media and the publishers all didn't want to publish the book for one reason or another. But it did get published. It did, self-published. Never did very well. Well, to, to get down to the heart of the matter, uh, Mr. Desmarquette claims that he was abducted by beautiful-looking, eight-foot-tall, hermaphroditic human beings who took them aboard their spacecraft and traveled billions of miles ac across the galaxy to their home planet known as Thea Uba. Yes, that's the heart of the story. And in particular, one of those uh, her hermaphroditic beings named Thao or Tao uh, developed a uh, well became his guide or supervisor and and uh, the, the the claim in the book is that he was abducted for a ten day period uh, he had many adventures he was brought to their planet and then re returned and I have to say to me it reads very much like Gulliver's Travels in, in a way it's a a moral lesson it seems to be at the heart of it all. Yes, exactly. And he brought a lot of knowledge about the history of Earth, where um, different races of people came from, the history of um, um, the religions and also uh, things about uh, um, Chinese people or uh, Caucasian people or African-American people or Jewish people. And also, it tells a lot of uh, interesting stories about um, the Bible, what the stories um, um, actually uh, were distorted in the Bible. So, Thao, his uh, guide in this experience, explained that her race of people are all hermaphrodites, but they consider themselves human, that the universe as we know it, or at least this part of the galaxy, is populated, many planets are populated by uh, beings who are basically human, like, like ourselves, and that her race is a very advanced race. I think they refer to the planet Thea Uba as being at the ninth level, uh, whereas Earth would be at the first level, very, very primitive in comparison, and that they have been watching over the Earth for over a million years. That's right. And they have uh, visited us in the past and provided guidance and warnings and also perhaps punishments to us. She also demonstrates extraordinary powers of mind control that if, if she chose, she could basically uh, cause uh, Michelle to experience almost anything. And as, as a demonstration of that, uh, of her power, she created a, a vision in which he believed that the spaceship they were on was being uh, blown apart. 
Yes, and he had the ability to do it. This is what she called illusion, and what some people of um, on Earth call true magic. She indicated other examples of uh, how they would intervene this way in humanity by using this extraordinary ability to control our, our very concepts of reality. Uh, yes, for, for good purposes. For example, in the book, she mentioned that um, they prevented Germany from the first from the country being the first country developing the atomic bomb, and they also had other interventions too. It seems quite extraordinary that the, that there are all these stories and and interventions, and at the same time, Tao is demonstrating that she can manipulate the reality. So it makes me wonder whether uh, what other portions of the book itself, the experiences that Desmarquette claims that he had, might not have been the result of uh, I think what at one point in the book is described as hypnosis. What uh, intrigued me about uh, this is that uh, there are a lot of uh, um, evidence in the book or facts in the book that can be proven, can be validated. For example, uh, the book talks about uh, uh, there is a tomb of Jesus in Shingo Village, Japan. And that's a very interesting fact that a person like Michel de Marquet wouldn't have known uh, in the early 90s in Australia and never been to Japan. And also the book talked about um, the fact that the U.S. government sent uh, billions of needles into space. Um, and then the needles disappeared uh, because of their intervention. And I looked it up. Um, indeed, the U.S. government did send uh, billions of needles into space. Uh, this is what uh, the so-called Project Westford. And the needles disappeared. They contribute to the disappearance of the needles of uh, being a failure of the lunch of the lunch. I don't know whether it's true or not, but the needles disappeared. Now, I made a, uh, a point to trying to validate that story, and I did discover, yes, uh, many years ago, some uh, 300 million needles were, were sent into outer space. But what I read is that it was planned that they would eventually fall back to Earth. And however, some of them are still up there and are being tracked today, that there are clumps of needles. And we have very pre precise tracking instruments that are still aware of them. Mm, yes, that's very interesting. But what the book emphasizes is that uh, the spirituality is something that we should pay attention to nowadays, because uh, given the current situation we are in right now, we should focus more on developing our spiritual um, growth and not to focus too much on the material wealth, because uh, we as human beings live on a planet is to develop our spirituality and to um, to believe in uh, to to become uh, more love to have more love to each other uh, especially unconditional love this is actually another important uh, theme of the book well, I totally support that theme. I, I think it's absolutely true. Uh, on this planet, it would seem as if we're a rather primitive species when it comes to something like unconditional love. We're a planet that is plagued by warfare and uh, pollution of, of all sorts. So uh, that's a very important message. And I think uh, it's also true that there must be 20 or 30 other individuals who claim to have, just like, uh, as you pronounce it, Desmarquet, uh, I probably was mispronouncing his name earlier, uh, have had uh, visitations to other planets aboard spacecraft. And they all come back with this a similar message about how uh, we need to evolve spiritually or we won't survive. Yes, indeed. And uh, what's different about uh, Michel de Marquet's book is that it provided specific information, very specific information about certain things that makes me wonder um, that uh, this book is probably uh, one of the most important books in this century. 
because uh, similar to uh, what that book says, it talks about spirituality, but this book provides a lot of uh, evidence that uh, amazed me personally that I decided to look into further. And specifically, I did a lot of research um, and found that this book is um, uh, has a lot of very scientific basis. For example, when Michel de Marquet was about to abort the um, the spaceship after he aborted, um, he was shown um, like yellow light and blue light to disinfe- disinfect him. And I did research on the effectiveness of blue light, and then found that it's antibacterial, antiviral. And uh, so the the aliens, the ETs, use this technology to disinfect um, this Michel de Marquet, the author. I found this to be very interesting. Um, in addition to other evidence, such as uh, the human energy fields, like the auras and the chakras, um, those are um, written, documented in a lot of uh, um, ancient and modern books. It makes perfect sense to me that an advanced civilization would also have advanced spiritual knowledge. Yes, especially uh, the people from Theoba. Um, one thing I'd like to mention to you is that uh, um, they, according to the author, they had provided a lot of assistance in the past. And the author had um, given a lot of public lectures uh, in Australia uh, back in the 90s. And in one of his lectures, um, he told uh, the audience that he was shown a book, the Book of Enoch. Uh, after he read the Book of Enoch, he was amazed. He found the descriptions of the Book of, in the book of Enoch is very similar to what he saw on the planet Theoba. So I would assume that um, we have been visited many times in the past, and uh, Michel de Marquet's experience is probably another warning that the ETs are given to us. So we should take this book very seriously. One of the interesting things he pointed out is that while he was on this journey, and I think while he was on their planet, Theoba, uh, he was given the ability to see his, uh, about 80, as I recall, of his previous lifetimes. Yes, the book also talks about reincarnation. <laughs> and he did experience a lot of uh, uh, feelings uh, that people who have near-death experiences have. And he was, he was shown his past um, 80 lives. And a lot of his previous lives were kind of like a normal, like uh, he was like a beggar a few times. He was uh, like an average worker. He was a miner, like a mining worker. And only in one of his past 80 laps, he was a queen, a female queen. Um, and uh, it's very interesting that uh, the author was told that um, the human lives are um, like, they're like a, a wheel. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down. So um, people learn lessons from their lives and become more spiritual. Hopefully they learn spiritual lessons. One of the interesting points they made, if I understand correctly, is that as we go from lifetime to lifetime, we needn't have all of our lifetimes on the same planet. We might be on uh, uh, many different planets. Exactly. And he, uh, the highest level category of planet he was in, uh, he was on was the seventh category. And then he fell back to Earth, the first category, and he wasn't told the reason. They seem to have selected him in particular because they had knowledge of his past lifetimes and they felt that he would be able to carry out their intention, which is that he would write this book. Yes, and they specifically ask him not to change a single word of what he is about to written. And, and he uh, followed their instructions to the letter. And they told him not to worry about the, uh, the uh, uh, credibility of the book because uh, people will believe. Well, I have to tell you, to be quite honest, I'm fascinated by the book. I think it's an important book because it's part of an important genre. But uh, I think it would be dangerous for people to take uh, books of this genre at face value. Yes, we all need to have independent thinking. 
I'm a believer of this book. There are people who don't uh, necessarily think what happened to Michelle de Marquet was real. Um, they have their free will to think what they like. But personally, I have met the author twice and I learned about uh, the things not written in the book. Those are amazing knowledge and facts uh, that uh, to be validated in the future. And I think uh, uh, this is a very interesting time that people may take this book and to read about it and see what they think about it. One of uh, the intriguing things to me about the book is that he was taken to another planet on the way to Thea Uba. They, they made a little stop at, at a, a different planet, a planet in which the people had basically destroyed their civilization through nuclear war. There were just a few remnants of the human population left on that planet after the uh, nuclear holocaust. Yes, uh, the planet was called the uh, Arima X3 planet, and the size of the planet was three times larger than Earth. And the uh, people from that planet actually uh, 20 million years ago came to Earth and established a civilization called Lemuria. Uh, it was a continent uh, between China and the United States on the islands of Hawaii um, to uh, Easter Island. And then the continent sank, so the civilization was lost. And uh, an interesting thing is that uh, while they were on that planet, they saw some of the remnants of the human population, people who were badly damaged through radioactivity, who were being chased by some sort of giant ants, ants about the size of rats, as I recall. And the Thea Ubens intervened in behalf of those humans and, and destroyed the ants that were chasing them. And afterwards, the people on that planet all bowed down, kneeled down, and then worshipped the sky or the Ubens as gods. It's a very interesting story. I think that happened uh, to our past, too. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, I think uh, the story makes it rather clear that what, what we humans in our mythology referred to as gods were actually the Theobans themselves, extraterrestrials. If you're talking about gods in physical form, that might be Theobans or other ETs. If you're talking about the, the god that created the universe, the Obans have a different explanation. They believe that God, what we call the God, the creation of the world, is a great spirit. Very much like Native Americans. Yes, and also the Big Bang Theory. The book doesn't say an awful lot about other non-human extraterrestrial races. I've talked to people who say there could be 30, 40, maybe 100 other non-human species visiting this planet. Yes, it doesn't talk a lot, but it says that uh, in our galaxy, there are over 100 other different uh, species of human beings. Um, and uh, actually, the author was shown um, you know, golden doko, the bodies of representatives of those different aliens or different ETs. Uh, those are very, very interesting. And uh, in a public lecture, Michel de Marquet also uh, specifically mentioned about the gray aliens. Now, you use the word doko. So I, I think we better define that. That's not a normal word our viewers would be familiar with. Um, Doko is actually a building structure that uh, Michel de Marquet saw on the planet Theoba. It uses a magnetic force to build like a half an egg shaped structure. Sometimes uh, it's horizontal, sometimes it's vertical. And then he was shown the bodies, you know, golden shaped Doko. And uh, what's interesting about the structure is that uh, people can enter in, and then once the people are inside, they can see outside. But the people from outside cannot see inside. Uh, it prevents rain, prevents prevents uh, uh, birds from um, falling down, and it is more like a, a energy protection of the people inside the doko. 
And what you just described earlier, he was taken into uh, a doko of this sort, and therein he saw, if I recall correctly, he said 200 bodies floating in, in the air, and these were essentially human beings, uh, although they were not exactly humans uh, such as ourselves, but were more or less human. And, and they're floating in the air, and amongst the bodies, he had, uh, encountered one that they identified as the body of Christ. Uh, he gave a very detailed uh, description of what he saw, the body of Christ. And uh, people will have to read the book to find out more. But one interesting fact was that he saw the uh, um, that there were injuries on the wrist of Christ, not on the hand, not on the palm. So uh, this is a one finite or very interesting detail was that when someone is crucified, if the nails uh, pierce through the hands or the palm, um, then it's not stable enough. Um, so Michel de Marquet saw that the injury uh, was under risk, uh, so that uh, it matches uh, the stability or the physical structure of a human body. That in order to stabilize the body, uh, the nails had to go through the wrist, not the palm. So there are many details like that having to do with the ancient history of humans, the development of different races on the planet Earth, and, and the development of our religions. Particularly, it seemed as if the Theobans had a, a major role to play in the origination of the Christian religion. Yes, specifically, uh, according to the book, uh, Christ was sent to the Earth, and Jesus uh, was born indeed from Virgin Mary, and there are two different beings. Jesus and Christ are two separate beings. If I understand you correctly, Jesus is the one who, at some point in the middle of his life, began traveling around the world, ended up in Japan, and is buried in the village of Shingo, Japan, where they actually have some sort of a uh, memorial to him. And there are actually two tombs, um, one for Jesus, who died in Japan, and the other for his brother, who died in China. And he took uh, the hair of his brother to Japan and then buried his brother's hair in another tomb nearby. And I, I did verify that if you look it up, there is such a location in Shingo, Japan, where they claim Jesus has been buried. Yes, and the locals uh, sing a very different song, uh, which is uh, very similar to the Hebrew language. And at the same time, now the Theobans are claiming that they sent one of their people to Earth in order to fulfill the role that we attribute to Christ. Yes, uh, the main purpose is to preach love and spirituality, and uh, Christ um, See, opens um, are taller than us, but they uh, shape shift uh, their bodies into a human shaped uh, body. And then Christ's uh, main purpose is to let people know that uh, love, unconditional love, is necessary at that time, and people should uh, treat each other with respect and love. And um, and and also there is a strong message from Christ, from his crucifixion, from his from his uh, resurrection, that there is life after death. Well, I think many of the spiritual messages described in the book uh, more or less make sense to me. A lot of the other stories about the origins of the Jewish people and the yeah uh, how how Christ was actually. A, a Thea Ubin person, I, I can't swallow that, to be honest. But I think that if we look at this literature overall, it does suggest that humanity is engaged in some sort of a dialogue with, with something far greater than us, something that we have a very difficult time putting into normal, earthly, human language. and. 
if if you take this whole body of literature uh, together, it, it suggests something is going on. Yes, especially when the Obans uh, give uh, give us a lot of warnings about how our politicians are running the world. Uh, what's really happening behind the scenes, and such as a group of financiers are the ones really controlling everything. And um, the author, uh, Michel de Marquet, uh, told me privately that there are 12 families behind everything. And uh, what we see in the media, at least mainstream media, is not what it appears. Uh, we really have to pay attention to what's really happening behind the scenes. In, in other words, the whole story uh, that Michel de Marquet is telling is uh, consistent with a range of thinking identified as conspiracy theories. I can say it's a little bit uh, similar to some conspiracy theories. Um, there are some interesting facts in the book that can be validated, and I think uh, it will be very interesting for the readers to um, to read them carefully and to have their independent um, judgment and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, Samuel, you should know, I've also interviewed another fellow named Charles Upton, who talks about the myth of uh, alien communication with humans as a, a kind of diabolic plot that uh, that is going on that uh, that these entities are uh, they may appear to be wonderful and good and helpful and beautiful but uh, it, in his view they are really the same as the demons or more specifically the jinns that are referred to in Islam and and that their purpose is ultimately to mislead people. Why go through the pain of misleading us? <laughs> I think uh, they're helping us, they're guiding us, they're our mentors. They're trying just like uh, um, helping us to grow more spiritually, like parents to their children. And they provide guidance, sometimes uh, directly, sometimes indirectly. They never serve meals on the plate. They they help us to learn how to uh, how to cook our meals, how to how to learn to become uh, uh, to become adults. I can also tell you that my mentor, I had a mentor many years ago named Arthur Young, and he went out. This would have been back in the 1980s. He bought all the books he could find of UFO contactees, maybe about 50, and donated all of them to the. Public library. Now, he was, uh, he, Arthur Young was the inventor of the Bell helicopter, the first commercially licensed helicopter. And he once told me if he could do it all over again, he'd try to build a UFO. And he also said to me that he thought that this kind of literature, the UFO contactee literature, could be the most important literature uh, that humanity has to grapple with today. I agree. Um, I think especially if you are given uh, suggestions or guidance from our mentors who have um, far more advanced civilizations, we should take them seriously. One of the interesting facts is that um, the reason I was searching for UFO contactee literature was to learn from them. I always believed in learning from the best and know everything there is. And I think learning from our uh, mentors, the ETs, is a, is a shortcut. Uh, it helps us to grow faster and more uh, and, and better and more uh, spiritually. And I think uh, I do believe that spirituality is something that we really need to focus on, especially during the cir uh, current circumstances. One of the themes that I noticed throughout the book, Abduction to the Ninth Planet, is that the Thea Ubens keep referring to is what they called universal law, that uh, all people on all planets are bound by certain universal principles. Yes, is to grow spiritually and to develop their sp spirituality. This is the key message. Uh, also, there was quite a bit of discussion about what they called the astral body and how uh, at death the astral body separates from the physical body. And yet, they made a point of saying the astral body is also physical. It's made up of electrons. 
Yes, that's a very interesting, very interesting fact. And and actually, the author um, was uh, taken, uh, was given like some medications or some pills so that his astral body actually left his physical body and he was able to float around and see what's happening around him. The other thing that my other guest, Charles Upton, points out is that there's a real danger uh, in these so-called new UFO religions that we might take these very advanced aliens, if that's what they are, and, and worship them as if they were gods. And, and in fact, the Theobans tell Desmarquette, Desmarquet, that uh, there were situations in which they allowed that to happen. Uh, the Theobans actually say religion is the fourth uh, most dangerous thing on earth. They uh, they believe that religious beliefs or practices on earth um, are really a curse, not really beneficial to the human being's spiritual growth. And um, uh, the the author Michel de Marquet um, uh, is strongly against people using his book or his stories. Uh, to form a new religion. And I agree that uh, forming a new religion about UFO contactees or the messages is a danger. It's, it's something that we should not uh, be doing. And I think uh, people should look inside themselves for answers because uh, uh, they, the kingdom of God is in their hearts. Is this really not, they really need to look inside themselves for answers. Is there anything else that you think our readers, our viewers, our listeners uh, should know about? I, I think uh, this message is, uh, is, should be uh, known by more people, especially the scientific communities, because it tells a lot of very interesting facts. For example, like when uh, Michel de Marquet was on their spaceship, he saw a lot of like uh, shining dots. He asked uh, Tao what they are. Um, Tao told him that those are the effects of antimatter guns. So when a spaceship is traveling at very high speed, they need to destroy all the space dusts. Uh, otherwise, the dust would destroy the spaceship at, at such a high speed. So I think this is something that we should uh, pay attention to when developing our spaceships, uh, when traveling to, to other planets in the future. And I also think that uh, uh, the book also mentions about uh, uh, the far side of the moon um, being a base for um, other ETs. Um, yes, indeed, on planet Arimo X3, uh, when they were about to migrate to Earth, they established a base on the far side of the moon. And then uh, using that, to uh, as a transportation hub uh, for them. And also, it mentioned about uh, life on Mars. Uh, a million years ago, there was life on Mars. But now, because of the cooling down of the uh, core of Mars, of, of Mars um, the old life forms disappeared. So now we find a lot of evidence that can really validate the content of the book. As we have more advanced technologies, we're going to find more interesting facts that are more consistent with what uh, the book tells about. I find that to be very interesting. Well, it'll be interesting to see how things move forward in, in this regard. You're certainly putting your finger on the pulse of probably the greatest mystery facing humanity today, Samuel. So I want to thank you very much for being with me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. And for those of you listening or watching, thank you for being with us. Thank you.